up your hands, say, Come for church, God. Welcome to Stroudland Christian Mission Church. Here are our COVID-19 protocols. As we do our best to overcome the pandemic situation, we kindly request that you ensure that all requested hygiene protocols are adhered to in the best interest of everyone. Face masks shall be worn throughout the service by all persons present in the church, except a person who is officiating, preaching, singing, reading, praying, or playing a wind instrument. A physical distance of one meter shall be maintained between all persons. Only members of the same household may sit together. Your hands shall be sanitized upon entry. Your temperature shall be taken before entering the church. A person who is coughing repeatedly, sneezing, or exhibit any flu-like symptoms, or who have having their temperature taken for a second time still registers a temperature that exceeds 37.5 degrees, shall not be allowed to enter the church. No hymnals or Bibles shall be distributed. Your offerings shall be placed in the baskets on the table at the altar, either before the commencement of the service or should you arrive after the service commences at the indication of the worship leader. Thank you for your cooperation. Good morning to the church. And welcome this morning to our youth Sunday. We're so glad that you're here worshiping with us. To those of you who are in the sanctuary and those of you who are watching us online, we're so glad that you decided to choose here as the place to encounter God this morning. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So before we begin, we're going to have our opening prayer, and that's going to be done this morning by our sister V. You may stand. Good morning to the church. Good morning, everyone. Those that are online this morning, let us pray. Father, we come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord, for journey of mercies. We want to thank you, Lord, for helping us that we can come into your house today, dear God. This last Sunday of this month, we know it's because of your goodness and because of your mercies 
We are here to worship you, Lord, because you're worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun, even to the going down thereof. Father, we bring this service before you right now. We ask that you remember the worship team in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray you would touch them, Lord. And as we come in, we sing the sound of the sanctuary. We pray, God, that our souls will be blessed and encouraged. Even the musicians also, even the technical team, Lord, we place everything in your hand this morning. And most of all, we pray you remember the one that has to bring your word, Lord. We come, Lord, to receive from you, dear God. And we pray for a special anointing upon that person in the mighty name of Jesus. We want to thank you, Lord, for the, the youth, dear God, because it's youth Sunday. And we pray, God, that you will continue to cover them in your precious blood, Lord. Father, we pray you'll protect them, Lord, as they journey day after day. Pray, God, that you will continue, Lord, that they will continue to look to you. As our team said, look, looking unto Jesus, we know who is the author and finisher of their faith. Lord, we pray that though we even remember those that are on their way, that you will bring them in peace and safety. We come to have a good time in the house of the Lord. We come to worship you this morning, Lord, for you are worthy. We pray that you will bless the remainder of this service in Jesus' name. What I acknowledge our pastor also and our assistant pastor. Continue to stand by them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Ray. At this time, we're going to have our morning's reading, and it's going to be taken from Psalm 48, and we're going to read it together. Psalm 48. Reading. It says, Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. God is known in her palaces for a refuge. For lo, the kings were assembled. They passed by together. They saw it, and so they marveled. They were troubled and hasted away. Fear took hold upon them there, and pain as of a woman in travail. Thou breakest the ships of Tarshish with an east wind, as we have heard, so have we seen in the city of the Lord of hosts, in the city of our God. God will establish it forever. Selah, we have thought of thy loving kindness, O God, in the midst of thy temple. According to thy name, O God, so is thy praise unto the ends of the earth. Thy right hand is full of righteousness. Let Mount Zion rejoice. Let the daughters of Judah be glad because of thy judgments. Walk about Zion and go round about her. Tell the towers thereof. Bulwarks, consider her palaces that ye may tell it to the generation following. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even unto death. Hallelujah this morning. And now... That Psalm 48 starts off by saying, great is our God and greatly to be praised. So this morning we come into the presence of the Lord to just say how great he is, that he is a God that is well able. He's able to do anything and he's able to do all things. Amen. So this morning we're here to praise and exalt his name. So let's just lift our hands and start to praise his name and exalt his name for he's worthy. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He's able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's clap our hands and praise God this morning, amen. Creator of the universe, oh, what can Thank you. 
this morning, we serve a God who is able. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. And we stand amazed at him this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
praise God. Hallelujah. From the minuscule to the massive, God is always with us. Amen. Hallelujah. He's worthy this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And this morning, as we pick up this morning's offering, um, if you have not already given your offering, you can do so at the back. Um, we're going to sing that song, You Can't Beat God's Giving. Amen. Hallelujah. You can't be God's given No matter how you try And just as sure as you are living And the Lord is from heaven on high The more you give, the more he gives to you Just keep on giving Because it's very true that you can't be God's given No matter how you try 
given heavenly father we want to give you thanks we want to give you praises father lord you are worthy of all your praises lord lord i bring this offering before you lord bless the hands who gave those who have not to give at this present moment lord you will by means and ways that they'll be able to give unto you unto the honor and glory of your name for christ's sake amen amen praise god at this time you may take your seats and we're going to have our announcements this morning by our assistant pastor, Sister Mary Farley. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This morning we are happy, we are glad, and we are thankful that we can be found in the presence of the Lord. Because we know in the presence of the Lord, there's a fullness of joy. And at his right hand, there are peace and pleasures forevermore. Let us begin with our Christian Mission Headquarters announcements for week commencing Sunday, April the 24th, 2022. It came even to pass, as the trumpeters and singers were as one, to make one song to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, for he is good, for his mercy endure forever, that then the house was filled with a cloud, even the house of the Lord. And that can be found in Second Chronicles chapter 5, verse 13. Our fourth prayer vigil, which was hosted by our Eastern Circuit yesterday morning, was a tremendous success, as the shifting in the atmosphere intensifies. Our Northern Circuit will host the fifth and final session on Saturday, April the 30th at 6 a.m. Today's worship experience will be live streamed at 11 a.m. from our Strowland Christian Mission Church. Join them on our Southern Circuit and Christian Mission International Facebook and on YouTube. Please continue to be extremely vigilant in your observation of the government's COVID-19 protocols and continue fervent in prayer against the COVID-19 pandemic. Our ladies' ministries extend thanks to all who supported their session of prayer at Dash Valley Christian Mission on Saturday the 23rd. Continue fervent in prayer for our children as they share. Sunday school teachers are reminded to submit their students' recorded Child Month Mornings devotions immediately. 
Our second quarterly service for 2022 convenes on Sunday, May the 15th at the Gospel Tabernacle. Pastors are asked to prepare candidates immediately for baptism, which proceeds on Saturday, May the 14th. Continue fervent in prayer for our pastors, Orwin Lynch, Marion Corbin, Gladys Small, and Sherlyn Thompson and their families. Remember Brother DaCosta O'Neill from Rock Hall, St. Lucie, the sick and chatins, the various ministries of the Church International, and families of the dearly departed in our prayers. Praise the Lord. And now to our local announcements. This morning we extend a very special welcome to everyone who is worshiping with us in the sanctuary today and those who are viewing online. Thanks to the ladies' ministries who facilitated the Bible study on Sunday evening. The presenter, Pastor Steve Moore, continued his Bible study on the fall of Adam and Eve. It was a very informative session. Thanks to the mentorship team for facilitating Wednesday night Bible study. Brother Larry convened the session with a very interesting discussion surrounding a video that was shown. Thanks to the youth ministry for conducting today's service. May God richly bless their ministry. Continue to pray for our Sunday school students as they return to the classroom for the third term. The youth, ladies, sign language, mentorship, and dance ministries, the senior members, and those who are ill. Our Bible study will continue on Wednesday night via Zoom. It will commence at 7.30 p.m., and invitation is extended to everyone. Pastor Conliffe has asked to say thanks to everyone who prayed for her and sent messages of encouragement. Praise God, she's doing much better. The God be the glory and praise. Praise the Lord. And on this, the last Sunday in the month of April, we are sending out birthday greetings to Casia, who will celebrate her birthday on the 26th, and Shannon and Shanice, who will celebrate theirs on the 27th of April. We wish all these ladies a very happy birthday and God's continual blessings. And the worship team will sing the happy birthday song. A happy birthday to all those celebrating birthdays. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. Every day of the year, may you find Jesus there. A happy birthday to you, a happy birthday to you. The best that you ever. We're going to have the blessing of an infant, and we're always happy here when we have infants to bless and dedicate to the Lord. So as we start to sing, we're going to sing the first verse of that song, When Mothers of Salem, as the parties will come to the front, the ushers will escort you, and our pastor will get ready to do the blessing. When mothers of Salem, their children brought to Jesus, the stern disciples drove them back and did them depart. Praise the Lord. This morning, it's another honor to dedicate 
an infant to the Lord. And I often say that those parents who seek to have their children blessed and dedicated are doing what is exactly right, especially in these times. So this morning, let me welcome the parents and the godparents, and may God bless the proceedings. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. We'll now proceed with the dedicating of the infant. Dearly beloved, the family is a divine institution ordained of God from the beginning of time. Children are a heritage of the Lord, committed by him in their par and their parents for care, protection, and training for his glory. It is meet that all parents recognize this obligation and their responsibility to God in this matter. The Virgin Mary also brought the infant Jesus to the temple. The parent of this child likewise recognized the sacredness of their charge and now bring back to the Lord the treasure which he has entrusted to them. In so doing, they recognize and hereby publicly acknowledge their responsibility for the nurture and admonition of this child in the ways of righteousness. Praise the name of the Lord. And Hannah bare a son and called his name Samuel, and she brought him back into the house of the Lord. In the New Testament, we read concerning the infant Christ that when eight days were fulfilled, they called his name Jesus and brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. In the book of Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, it says, Train up the child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. My friends, this is a happy and significant occasion which brings us together. Like Mary and Hannah of old, you have brought your child to the temple today to present her to the Lord. You have heard the invitation of the master, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. It is fitting that you should bring your child while the spell of his advent is still upon you. The mystery and wonder of this new life have brought you to stand reverently and thoughtfully before the Father of life and to have given you a new compelling message of dignity of life and the obligation of parenthood. The purpose of this service is to help you as parents, to appreciate your obligation to train up your child in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And when she shall come to age of responsibility, she will most naturally turn from the wrong to the right and accept Jesus as her savior. God has a purpose for this child's life. To find that purpose and to live it out fully will mean success. To refuse or ignore it will mean failure, no matter how much worldly acclaim may come. This morning, it gives me great pleasure to dedicate this infant to the Lord. And now I will proceed with the dedication. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I dedicate this child, Nikira Isabel, Kyra, Nikira Isabella Nurse Jemant, to God and his holy service. And I will repeat it again. In the name of the Lord Jesus, 
I dedicate this child, Nikaira Isabella Nurse Gemma, to God and his holy service. Let's praise the Lord. Let's praise the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And it's no doubt that she is a bouncing, bouncing, beautiful, healthy baby girl. Praise the name of the Lord. As I pray for Nikaira, I want you to point your hands towards her. I want you to point your hands towards, of course, the parents are there. And we are going to say a prayer for this beautiful little darling. Heavenly Father, this morning in the precious name of Jesus, we bring Nikaira to you, Lord. A beautiful, bouncing, healthy baby girl. Amidst the COVID, amidst the con all the various diseases, amidst the foot and mouth and hand diseases, you have brought Mommy Nikita through pregnancy. You have protected her. You have preserved her. You have provided for her. And this morning we rejoice with her that God has brought her daughter safely into this world. Father, we thank you for placing the desire within our heart to offer back this child to the Lord. She knows the goodness of the Lord. She knows the mercies of the Lord. She knows the times in which we are living. She cannot afford not to ask God for covering. Right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bring Mommy Nikita and Daddy Delano to you. And I bring the Kyra to you, Lord. This family, Lord, and by extension, her other daughter and every member of the family to you this morning. Father, be a protector. Father, be a provider. Be a shield. Oh, be a buckler, Lord. Be a hiding place. Oh, glory, glory, glory this morning, Lord. I pray, Lord, as Nakaira grows and as she matures and she comes on to the kindergarten stages and the nursery stages and she progresses, Lord, physically, intellectually, socially, environmentally. I pray, God, for your divine covering. Oh, Father, I pray that you will build a hedge around her. And, Lord, if she has to be in the care where she has to be provided for, we come against those childhood diseases that are so prevalent. We come against her contracting any illness or sickness. We pray that you will build up that immunity system so that she may be able to throw off and fight off any diseases. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless her, Lord. Bless her, Lord. Bless her, Lord. Take care of her, and if she continues to grow and mature, she will be moving on from one stage to another. We come against bullying. We come against those, Lord, who are so promiscuous, Lord, and those who would want, Lord, to cause all kinds of pain and hurt and abusive behavior. But we rebuke it in the name of Jesus, and we declare, Father, no weapon form against her will prosper. No weapon, Lord. There will be no sort of abuse, none whatsoever, but she will grow healthy. She will grow spiritually strong, and she will be a little darling in the house of the Lord. I pronounce blessings upon dad this morning. I pronounce blessings upon mom. I pronounce blessings upon godmother and goddad. I pronounce blessings upon granny who could not be here this morning. And all the other members of family godmother who was overseas and couldn't be here. God, I commit everything into your keeping. Let your presence be with this family. Let the love of God and the peace of God which passeth all understanding richly rule and reign over them and we and for the final time we commit Nakaira Isabella nurse Gemma to you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit Amen as the second verse is sung the ushers will escort you back to your seat praise the name of the Lord thank you praise the Lord. you're welcome hallelujah For I will receive them and hold them in my bosom. I'll be a shepherd to those lambs and drive them not away. For in their hearts to me they give, they shall with me in glory live. Suffer the little children to come unto me. 
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me at this time, as usual, pass on my greetings to the church. And this morning, truly, I am blessed and encouraged to see everyone present in the house of the Lord. And I am even so more blessed this morning when I heard our dear Pastor Conliffe, who called to say a special thank you to the members for your prayers and your words of encouragement. And she is indeed feeling much better, and she is grateful and thankful. So let us continue. Let us continue to remember her in prayer. This morning, I want to say thanks to the worship team. Today is Youth Sunday. And we say thanks to the worship team under the leadership of Sister Joyanne, Sister Moisha, and our brother Sammy. Put your hands together for them. And so ably accompanied by our dear brother Archer on the guitar and our brother Keyshawn on the drums, they complimented the worship. And indeed, we had a wonderful, wonderful worship session. Thanks to our young people. Also want to say thanks to the technical team under the leadership of our brother Deshaun and our sister Alicia on the video camera. Want to say thanks to our beautiful ushers for an excellent job, which they always do. Our brother Larry, secure personnel, and everyone present in the house of the Lord. Our God is an awesome God. And for those like Casey who is celebrating a birthday, Casey, we wish you a happy birthday. And I know it's going to be a difficult one for you, but be good. Be great. You're going to enjoy it in Jesus' name. We're glad to see our sister Juliet this morning. She wasn't sure what would be her situation and sister Natalie, but I'm happy that both of them are in the house of the Lord. Let's give God some thanks. Let's give God some praise. So as the service continues, let us be praying for the ministering servant, a young, wonderful, beautiful lady of the Lord. And we know that God has given her a word. So when the time comes for her to minister, let, her, let us pray her through. So again, let me say welcome to our guest this morning. And it's a pleasure to have you. And we will continue to give God the glory and the praise. Now I have one request as to Joyanne. And that is our Sunday school students and those at tertiary institutions will be soon starting with the Sunday school students will be commencing a new school term, Trinity term, from Tuesday. Teachers will be on Monday. But those at the tertiary institutions are in the process of examination. Our sister Tanisha, she is also be doing, going to be doing exams. So um, whoever is doing the closing prayer, I want you to just remind them to say a special prayer for all students, whether they are primary, secondary, or tertiary. So God bless you, and we hand back over to Sister Joyanne. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Before our speaker comes, we're going to sing a few songs. You can stand to your be and worship with us. Because we serve such an awesome God this morning. He's an awesome and a wonderful God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You call the sun to rise. You
direct thy path. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We're so glad this morning to be able to hear the word of God. And we're going to be hearing it this morning from our sister Maria Farley. So stay standing as she, you can keep standing as she comes. And she's no stranger to this pulpit. And we know that God has laid a word of God, a word on her heart for us this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So congregation, Sister Maria, Sister Maria, your congregation. into the church. This morning we'll be reading from Judges chapter 6 verses 11 to 16. reading. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was an Arphra, that pertained unto Joas the Abezrite, and his son Gideon threshed wheat by the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befallen us? And where be all his miracles, which our fathers told us of, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord hath forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. And the Lord looked upon him and said, Go in this thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? And he said unto him, O oh, my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, we do thank you. Oh, count it a wonderful privilege to be in your house again this morning, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity, Lord, and we pray, thank you for your presence being with us, Lord. So even as I will voice forth this message, Lord God, I pray that it will find receptive hearts, Lord. I pray that someone will be encouraged as to go on in throughout life's trials today. And I just continue to give you all the honor, glory, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You may take your seats. Okay. So the passage that we just read follows on from where Sister Joanne would have taken her um, sermonette back in February she would have looked at the first 10 verses. And that, just to recap, we would know that the Israelites had found themselves in a very dire situation. They had done evil in the sight of the Lord, and they were worshiping the gods of the Amorites. So as a result, God punished them by allowing the Midianites to oppress them. They had to seek shelter in mountain clefts and caves. They were unable to plant any crops as the Midianites would invade their land and destroy them. And this oppression lasted seven years before the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. So today I am picking up the story at the point where God is calling the leader who will save the Israelites from the Midianites. So verse 11 tells us that the angel of the Lord appears to this unlikely hero while he is threshing wheat in a wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. In his greeting, the, Lord of, the angel of the Lord assured Gideon of God's presence. And Gideon's response was, but sir, 
if the Lord is with us, why has all of this happened to us? And I'm sure that is a question that you hear often. You would hear persons going through trials and tribulations and saying, well, if God is with us, why did he allow my loved one to die? Or if God is with us, why is this pandemic still going on? Or if God is with us, why, are we still why am I still unemployed, et cetera? And we don't always have the answers to these questions but sometimes it can be due to sin in our lives, as it was in the case of Gideon and the Israelites. They had disobeyed God, and so they were being oppressed, as verse, 11, verse 10 tells us. They had turned away from the true and the living God and were worshiping false gods. And Gideon's response is typical of us when we're going through trials and tribulations. We find it difficult to believe that God is with us when, things aren't, when, thing, when everything seems to be going wrong. We equate God's presence with everything going right, smooth sailing, a life of leisure, no, no troubles. But that's not always the case. But instead of addressing Gideon's concerns, the Lord instructs him to go in this thy might and save Israel from the Midianites. So verse 14 is our key text this morning. And when I look at the translation in the New International Version, it says, The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? So that is my theme this morning. Go in the strength you have. So the, Midian, so the Miriam Webster Dictionary defines strength as the quality or state of being strong, capacity for exertion or endurance, power to resist force or power of resisting attack. Essentially, strength is the opposite of weakness. Because when we think of strength in the natural, we think of the world's strongest man, where they'll be like lifting these huge boulders that are 10 times their weight, or they'll be pulling a plane or a truck or something, so with a rope tied around them. So we think of that physically. And then when we think of somebody that is emotionally strong, we never see them breaking down. No matter what happens to them, they're never cowering or crying or anything like that. They just always seem to take whatever life brings to them. But the source of our strength is of utmost importance. Because if we rely on ourselves and believe that our strengths come from within us, we tend to become proud and arrogant. Yet no matter how strong we think we are, we will fail. As the saying goes, a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Our human strength has a breaking point. So as Christians, we know that God is the source of our strength. And here is what the Bible teaches us about strength. Firstly, God gives strength. Psalm 68 verse 35 tells us, O God, thou art terrible out of thy holy places. The God of Israel is he that giveth strength and power unto his people. Blessed be God. And as Isaiah 40, verse 29 says, He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. So we know God gives strength. Secondly, strength comes from the power of his presence. Joshua 1, 9, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Isaiah 41, 10, fear not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. And Haggai 2, 4, yet now be strong, O Zerubbabel, saith the Lord. And be strong, O Joshua, o, o Joshua, son of Josedek, the high priest. And be strong, all ye people of the land, saith the Lord, and work, for I am with you save the Lord of hosts. So strength comes from the promise of his presence. Strength also comes from the realization of his grace. 2 Timothy 2.1, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And strength comes from the Holy Spirit. Zechariah 4.6, Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. So our strength is found in Christ. 
in our having a vibrant, dynamic relationship with him. It is Christ who empowers us to do whatever is necessary to accomplish God's will. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me, Philippians 4.13. And there is no other source that gives man the strength to overcome the world with its trials and temptations. But the Bible says that our strength is related to surrender. We have to submit to God and resist the devil so that he will flee from us, James 4, 7. We align ourselves with the strength of God through our total submission to him. Then we are able to withstand the wiles of the evil one, Ephesians 6, 10 to 11. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So those who rely on God's strength from day to day will find in him a never-ending spring of energy. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. And that is Psalm 84, verses 5 and 7. As God's children, we are strengthened by his grace. Hebrews 13, 9. By our time spent in prayer, Luke 18, 1, and by the promise that God will reward our efforts, Galatians 6, 9. Many around us may grow weary and faint, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint, Isaiah 40, 31. So back to Gideon. God instructed him in verse 14 to go in the strength you have. Gideon's response, he didn't think he had, the, he had the strength to save Israel from the Midianites. And in verse 15, he lists some very valid points. His family was poor and insignificant in Manasseh, and he was the youngest of his father's children. So Gideon saw himself as unfit for the task that God was calling him to. And we may agree. Yet we know that while we tend to look at the outward appearance, God looks at the heart. And one Bible commentator suggests that Gideon indeed had strength, but not as we might normally think. Instead, Gideon had the strength of the humble because God found him threshing wheat on the winepress floor. And we know that God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. And that's in James 4, 6. And Gideon had the strength of the caring because he cared about the lower place of Israel. Gideon had the strength of knowledge because he knew God did great things in the past. Gideon had the strength of the spiritually hungry because he wanted to see God do great things again. Gideon had the strength of the teachable because he listened to what the angel of the Lord said. And Gideon had the strength of the weak and God's strength is perfected in weakness. So hence, Gideon had the characteristics that God was looking for in a leader. But as I said earlier, God is the source of our strength. Therefore, go in the strength you have was not an instruction for Gideon to rely on his own strength, but on the strength that God supplies. So how can we tap into this strength that God supplies? While I was, sorry, just a minute. Right. So how can we tap into this strength that God supplies? While I was doing my research for this sermonette, I came across an article entitled, Seven Ways to Find Strength in God During Life's Challenges. And I will share these seven ways now. First one, you accept that you are weak. Second Corinthians 12, seven to 10, and you can follow along on the screen. Verse seven. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. 
Therefore, I take pleasure in, inf in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So the Apostle Paul is speaking here, and he learned the, the secret of finding strength in God. He was given a thorn in the side to keep him humble. He prayed three times for God to take it away, as we all would when we have any kind of challenge. But God's response was no. He wanted Paul to rely on his, his grace for strength. And Paul then came to the realization that the power of Christ works while he is in the midst of hardship. And similarly, Gideon also came to this realization as God was able to use him mightily despite his apparent weaknesses. So we have to accept that we are weak. Secondly, we have to read and meditate on God's word. Psalm 1, 19, 1 of 5 says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The Bible is much more than just a book. I consider it a manual for life. And it is God's word for us. It is his written love letter, and it is there to guide us through life. And Jesus likened it to food for the soul. Matthew 4, 4, he said, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Many times when we as Christians find ourselves feeling weak, it is because we have not been reading and meditating on God's word enough. When you are weak or going through a battle, I suggest that you increase the amount of time and energy you spend in God's word. Feed your soul with the word of God. It helps greatly. And doing this will help you to overcome your situation. As 1 John 2:14 states, I have written unto you, fathers, because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written to you, unto you, young men, because ye are strong, and the word of God abideth in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. So spend time reading and meditating on God's word. Thirdly, increase your time in prayer. Psalm 138, verse 3. In the day when I cried, thou answered me, and strengthened me with strength in my soul. Prayer is two-way com communication with God. Not only do we need to speak to God, but he desires to respond to us. Prayer goes hand in hand with reading God's word. And if we are honest with ourselves, many times we find ourselves struggling. It's because we have let other things get in the way of our communication with God. We should prioritize spending time in prayer with God, making sure that we stop and listen for him to respond. Number four, trust and obey. A songwriter says, when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. And when we look to the word of God in Deuteronomy verse 11, verse, sorry, chapter 11, verse 8, it tells us, Therefore shall you keep all the commandments which I command you this day, that ye may be strong and go in and possess the land whither ye go to possess, to possess it. Often we tend to become self-willed and do things our own way rather than obeying God and placing our trust in him. So take a moment and think about what is going on in your life. Are you obeying what God has told you to do? And I'm not talking about trying to be perfect. I'm talking about those things that you know God has been nudging or convicting you about. What was the last thing God told you to do? Are you still doing it? Or did you let a lack of trust cause you to make an excuse not to obey? When we are obedient to, the, to follow the leading of the Lord, then we find the strength in God we need to accomplish the task. So trust and obey. Number five, worship through to victory. Exodus 15, 2. The Lord is my strength and song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will prepare him in habitation. My Father's God, and I will exalt him. The power of music is terrific. It can touch our hearts in ways nothing else can. 
And when you combine that power with the power of prayer, it has fantastic results. We can all attest to the fact that listening to worship and praise music refreshes and restores our souls and gives us new strength. And we can find numerous examples in the book of Psalms where various psalmists sang praises to God in the midst of their trials. For example, Psalm 59, 17 states, Unto thee, O my strength, will I sing, for God is my defense and the God of my mercy. So worship through to victory. Number six, connect with other believers. Hebrews 10, 24 to 25. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. There is strength in numbers. When you are weak, you need others to lift you up. Isolation will lead to eventual failure. Consider again 2 Corinthians 12, 7 to 10. The Apostle Paul was writing to average, everyday Christians, and he wasn't too proud to let them know that he too was struggling, that he had a thorn in his flesh, that he was struggling with being weak. He humbled himself and admitted it to them and found the power to walk on. Sometimes we, don't, we are not willing to admit our weaknesses because we don't want others to think poorly of us, which is understandable, but it's not biblical. One of the key reasons the church was founded by Jesus was to help each other in our times of weakness. When we're going through one of life's challenges, we should ensure that we're connected to other believers who can encourage us and pray with us. We need people who will walk with us through these times. And number seven, be empowered by the Spirit. Jesus did not leave us alone to walk through life's challenges. He promised and he sent the Holy Spirit to lead, guide, and empower us with abilities beyond our own. When we become born again, the Spirit of God comes to live on the inside of us. And we are promised power when the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Acts 1.8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The disciples encountered numerous trials and tribulations as they lived out the commission Jesus gave them. The Holy Spirit gave them the power to overcome those obstacles so that they were able to accomplish their mission here on this earth. God did it for them, and he most certainly will do it for us. So to recap those seven, day, those seven ways, one, accept you are weak. Two, Read and meditate on God's word. Three, increase your time in prayer. Four, trust and obey. Five, worship through to victory. Six, connect with other believers. And seven, be encouraged by the Spirit. So my encouragement for us as believers today is to go in the strength you have, knowing that God is with you to deliver you from all of your troubles. And for those of you in the hearing of my voice who have not accepted God as your Lord and sa accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you to do so today, right now, before it is too late. And doing so will give you access to God's strength to help you through life's challenges. Amen.
Amen. Go in the strength that you have. Amen. And we're so thankful for those bits of advice that that Sister Maria would have left with us. And she would have mentioned connecting with others, connecting with those within the family of God. We know the word of God says not to neglect the assembling of ourselves together, you know? And it's so important to have that, have this community where you can come, you can learn, you can share. And we're so thankful for the strength that God gives to all of us. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to stand and we're going to close off this, um, this service. We're going to sing that song, How Great Is Our God, because we serve a great God this morning. Hallelujah. The splendor of Oh, God. 
Closes the service, she remember to pray for all of those young people, both in tertiary and primary, um, who will be going back into school from Tuesday, I believe it is. So just remember those children in prayer as they go back into their various um, educational institutions. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise. Father, we thank you another time to be back in your house. How great is our God. Father, at times we feel so stifled to give you praise, but at least we are here. And we know, Lord, in your time, God, you will open back up in full for us, that we could worship you, we could shout your praises. We know it's the enemy's duty that want to keep us down from worshiping you, but we know our God is great. Father, we thank you for today's service. We thank you for everything that has been said and done, even the youth. Lord, even the youth shall be strong, dear God. Father, you have a job for the youth, for the old, for the small, and for the great. But, Lord, we pray that we will take our places in your house and in your word. We pray for those, Lord, who are going back out to school and those who are for the beginning of school. We pray, God, you touch those little brain Touch those understanding. Provide for the parents, Lord, that they would give them the things that they need and not what they want. Because want is only for a time of to make them think that they're in, in control, Father, but help the parents to do the right thing to the children that they will learn, God. And as they go to school, each and every one of them, they will not take the school shoes and kick them out and the books and things and left the boat. And for the younger ones that they will not go places they should not go, but they're going to learn and come back home to the parents. Yes. Dear God, have mercy upon them. We pray also for the teachers, dear God, that they will to them as parents, not only teachers, but parents to them and aunties, Lord. I pray, God, you will guide and direct them. You know we are living in an evil day, and we are living in the last days, and we know the children need that love from the parents as well as the teachers. And dear God, if there's anything that they should say to protect them, that they will talk to the, the right teacher and to the parents, dear God. We remember them that are going to do exams. I pray, God, you refresh their brain, that they will remember all that they've been taught, and let it just come and come and come to them, dear God. Father, on, on our own, we can do nothing but we depend on you, Father. Dear God, we thank you for our pastor. We thank you for our assistant pastor. We thank you for every member in the church, those that are members and those that are not members as yet. We pray for those, Lord, that are listening online. Dear God, let something be said, Lord, that will draw them to you. Father, we know that you're coming soon, and there are many things to attract people. But God, help them not to be distracted. They will lean on you, Father. Father, we pray for our families day after day. 
pray, God, you will save them before time be too late. And, Lord, even for the parents that bring your word, that they'll be able to sit down and talk to their children concerning the souls. God, let them take that time. Because we, the older ones, used to come up in morning devotion and tell us right from wrong. Even though at times we stray, but the word is still within us. Father, I pray that they would talk to their children. It hurt to know to come to church, Lord, and they're not ready. Help them, dear God. Help them, Father. I bless your name, Lord. In Jesus' name. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful afternoon, everyone, and a good week.